Hey, how you doing? Scott Devine from scottspacelessons.com. If you haven't been to the website yet, make sure you go over there after this lesson and check out the hours and hours of free video lessons there are just like this one. And make sure you sign up as well because you'll be able to get the backing track that you've just heard, access to the backing track library and loads of other goodies as well. So in this lesson, I wanted to talk about getting a clean technique and specifically getting a clean left hand or fretting hand, sorry all you left hand guys, uh, a fretting hand um, technique together because I see countless students that, you know, they've got their, their scale knowledge together, their arpeggio knowledge, and they're all ready to apply it, but they just can't get their, uh, their lines together, their grooves and their solo lines as well, because their left hand technique is not where it should be. And a lot of this stems from bad habits when we actually first picked up the bass and we kind of sort of like get them and just sort of like drag them along with us as we as we learn the bass. So I just want to um, give this lesson and sh put this lesson out to all you guys that are in this situation. And for all you guys that don't think you're in this situation, check it out as well because you might learn something along the way. What we want to do first of all is give ourselves a neutral and relaxed playing position with our left hand. By, by the way, anybody that's wondering what the glove is about, don't worry, it's not super cold in the UK right now. It actually is, and I am wearing gloves, but not for that reason. The reason I wear a glove is because I have focal dystonia, which is a neurological condition. Very boring, you don't want to know about it, but I just thought I'd mention it because I'm getting hundreds of uh, emails and questions in my YouTube um, videos about it. So, back on to the lesson. We need to give ourselves a neutral left hand or fretting hand playing position. So this doesn't mean sort of like, you know, like this kind of thing, and, you know, we need to keep everything relaxed. Playing bass or any musical instrument, a huge part of it is just keeping relaxed, keeping your body relaxed while you're playing. So what I really recommend you doing is just get in a good seating position. So you've got, you know, or this could be standing, but your bass shouldn't be you know, at an, a right angle across your body like that. It should be, uh, I like to think of it as a sort of like 45 degree angle. So the, the body's back here and the neck's out here. And that gives us the ability, you know, we don't, we're not, we don't want the, the arm tucked up here like that. We want to have a nice relaxed arm like that. But in the hand, let's talk about the hand because this is the most important thing. And also, sorry, just get your neck up a little bit instead of having it down there. Up a little bit like that because you don't want to have your wrist sticking around like that. So let's start right from the start. Put your hand down just by, by your, on your leg like this. And I just want you to raise it up. Okay, just raise it up in the air. Keep it relaxed, nice and straight. And actually this is the playing position that you should be using. Not this, this. Okay, now just put it on the neck. If you just raise it up and put it on the neck, there is your ideal playing position. Okay, I'm not, it's not this, there's no huge bend in the wrist, you don't want the bend in the wrist because the tendons run through from the fingers, through a bone in the wrist and if you bend it like that, the tendons are going to be rubbing over, you know, over that bone and you're going to get, you know, problems with your wrist carpal tunnel and RSI and all that kind of thing. So keep this wrist nice and relaxed and straight. And if you want to, again, find that correct position, all you do is just relax your hand. So you've got nothing, you know, no tension in it at all. And you just raise it up to the neck. And there you go. And that's your kind of sort of like neutral position. Okay. I'm not bending. It's just nice and straight. If I was to play like this, you'll see. <laughs> There's a little bit of a bend happening there. You can see that a lot of the time it's actually dead straight. Down here you do get a tiny little bit of a bend, 
So watch out for that. Again, I'm aware. I'm not saying that I'm um, what's the, immune to these like little little bad technique glitches that people get. I've watched videos of myself and I'm like, ooh, I need to sort that out. Just as like, for instance, Tiger Woods has a, um, a, a golf coach, right? He's like the best golfer in the world, arguably. Arguably, I don't know anything about golf, but you know, I knew, I know that in the past he's been the best golfer in the world, and um, and he he's always had a coach because sometimes it's hard to spot your own, you know, your own problems. And this is why I watch back some of the videos just to check my technique, and I'm not doing anything wrong because most of the time I am. But this is why I put this video together so you can check it out as well. So make sure you've got a nice neutral technique. And the next thing you want to you want to look for is you want the the fingers to be curved. There's a nice curve there. They're not flat. I'm not playing like this. It's like here. And they're relaxed and I'm playing with my fingertips. Again, really important. Because you want the you want the contact with the string to be really precise and the fingertips is the best way to do that. And you want your movement as well. I'm going to have to take this glove, I shouldn't do this. But um, you want your movement to be really precise, nice and small. Yeah, and by using the fingertips, you're going to get that a lot easier. Again, the finger perforate thing, I'm sure you've heard that. I wanted to cover that in this lesson as well. People do say, I'm just going to put this glove back on, otherwise uh, if the doctor sees this, I'll be in trouble. Um, the, the finger per, for, the finger per fret thing is, it is valid, and essentially people mean you assign a finger per fret. And it just, it gives you a nice, you know, I'm just going to show you now. It gives you this kind of look. So for instance, if I to play a C major scale, it's a great scale just to start with if you want to try out any of these exercises, you know, just bring that hand up nice and neutral, grab that C major scale here. Making sure you're using the fingertips and the fingers are curved, okay? But the finger per fret thing, as you can see, there's a finger assigned to each fret. It's not this, okay? I'm not... It's... And that means as I play across the fingerboard, it's nice and clean, okay? There's not, I'm not kind of tripping over myself. The issue um, comes and on, or gets a little bit, you know, cloudy as we get down this end of the, the neck because, you know, everybody's got different size hands. And my, I've got quite a, a large stretch. But to do, you know, it's still, it's a stretch for me. And say like a C major scale down here, I could play it like that. But I'm not, I don't, what I don't want people to do is think that they have to, you know, there's ways of moving around the fingerboard down here that um, will make things a little bit easy for you. And what I like to do, for instance, if we take that C major scale, so it's three notes per string, almost, except for the G string. So we've got C, D, E on the A string, F, G, A on the D string, and then B and C. What, instead of trying to, you know, assign a finger per fret like that, what I want you to do is play, play the C with the first finger and then with the second finger, just move to it. Then you've got the E and then back to the F. But the sound there is really smooth. It's not... It's... Uh, see? I'm kind of moving. And that's how I deal with it. Again, people recommend doing um, a, a f like these, basically it's like a chromatic exercise where you're playing like, you assign a finger per fret down here. But again, that's a, I think it's a little bit too much of a stretch. 
and I've got big hands as well. So I, what I like to do is just get people to assign a finger per fret, but then get that little shift as well. So you're playing first finger, second finger, third, fourth, and look where my first is now. It's not still stretched over this fret. I'm moving it. And then as you get further up, then you can assign or keep them fingers over the fret. Great exercise, by the way, just to sort of, you know, put that out there. So hopefully this lesson has given you a little bit of an idea of how to deal with these these common sort of, you know, mistakes and bad habits that people are getting into. And also, just before I go, the, the baseball bat as well. Watch out for the old baseball bat move. That me the baseball bat move is where the thumb creeps over the top and you grab the neck like that. You know, loads of people play like that. Yeah, but if I want to, I can't. You know, that. Watch what happens as I rotate round. If I have my thumbs on the back of the neck just opens up the hand a, a lot. So if you're struggling to stretch, it could be because you've got the palm of your hand on the back of the neck and you're going for that choke hold, you know, that, that baseball bat vibe. So, you know, just be aware of that. So if you enjoyed this video on this lesson, click like below this video if you're watching it on YouTube. And if you haven't been to the website, go over there, you'll be able to get the backing track that you heard at the start of this lesson as well. So, and access to the backing track library and other cool goodies as well. Other than that, take it easy and I'll see you in the shed.